Today, I'd like to discuss the silence surrounding Adam Aron's stance on synthetic shorting and why it may actually be beneficial. There are speculations that Adam Aron is either a hedge fund puppet or being paid off. Hey, welcome to AMC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you can never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone remember this is not a financial advice video. Roger Hamilton, the CEO who is actively fighting against shorting, has shed some light on the situation. He revealed that he has faced increased targeting and pushbacks since speaking out against synthetic shorts. Despite making progress on the legal front, implementing corporate actions, and witnessing company growth, he has been forced to remain quieter. Why is this the case? According to Christian's warning to Roger, CEOs who publicly oppose Wall Street fraud often become the target of investigations by the very institutions that should be protecting them from market manipulators. The SEC, instead of tackling the fraud, decided to investigate Roger after he called out Wall Street fraud, leading to his company, GNS, also being targeted. Roger himself became a target, feeling the weight of intimidation and effectively being silenced. He deeply contemplated the situation and realized that his company and shareholders were suffering due to their enforced silence. Witnessing other CEOs facing similar silencing tactics and witnessing retail investors losing out, Roger made the courageous decision to risk speaking out again. He expressed his willingness to share full details in a live Twitter Spaces event. In essence, Roger's tweet highlights the fact that if CEOs like Adam Aaron had been vocal about fraud, two scenarios would likely have unfolded. Firstly, nothing significant would have happened, similar to Roger's experience so far. Secondly, AMC's trading value would have plummeted even further, potentially dropping below a dollar or even 10 cents per share. Short sellers would have intensified their efforts if Adam Aaron had spoken out. Nevertheless, it is important to note that companies fighting against synthetic shorting, like GNS, often face significant challenges and further destruction. This may explain why Ryan Cohen, just like Adam Aron, refrains from discussing synthetic shorting. Those who accuse Adam Aron of being a hedge fund puppet should also extend their claims to Ryan Cohen. Both CEOs avoid the topic for the sake of protecting their companies and shareholders. It appears that other CEOs also encounter the same predicament. One person conversing with Roger expressed their own conflict regarding speaking out and expressed their frustration. Roger acknowledged that they were all trapped between a rock and a hard place, recognizing it as part of the hedge fund strategy. This confirms that hedge funds specifically target CEOs who dare to address synthetic shorting. They swiftly and relentlessly crush their companies in an attempt to silence them. These nuts, in a tweet, revealed that other companies, such as MUL, have also been warned against vocalizing concerns about naked shorting. This person further criticized the corrupt government and the SEC for targeting companies that expose synthetic shorting. Roger intends to unveil the truth behind his silence over the past 10 weeks dedicating his explanation to CEOs and investors facing similar attacks. Understanding this, it becomes clear why Adam Aron refrains from speaking out against synthetic shorting and vehemently denying synthetic shares whenever possible. Ultimately, it is a means of protection, knowing that speaking out would not only yield no significant results, but also potentially drive AMC's value even lower, possibly leading to bankruptcy if lenders recalled their debt. Despite Wall Street's efforts to silence these CEOs, the shorts themselves are growing increasingly fearful as we enter phase two of the squeeze, as I will elaborate on shortly. Darren's tweet draws a parallel between listening to the ocean through a seashell and the audibly terrified hedge funds. An article on Investor Place declares the end of the meme stock frenzy, urging investors to sell seven meme stocks including AMC and GameStop, while some meme stocks have experienced recent surges suggesting a revival of the trend, the article argues that it is only a partial resurgence. Many previous meme stock favorites continue to struggle, 
and the current rallies may prove temporary. This article appears to be a desperate attempt by hedge funds to convince shareholders to sell their shares before the next phase of the squeeze. As previously explained in my videos, the squeeze encompasses four distinct stages. Initially, shorts close their smaller positions in large tech stocks, leading to a tech stock squeeze. We are already witnessing this phase. The subsequent phase, phase two, involves the closure of short positions in low cap gems like Carvana, as we are currently observing with stocks like SPCE, MULN, and NKLA surging in the pre market. For instance, Virgin Galactic stock was up 40% in the morning, MULN surged 17.6%, and NKLA increased by 15.71%. These smaller cap stocks are beginning to experience their own squeezes. Phase 3 will involve the squeeze of smaller meme stocks like Clove, Nokia, and BlackBerry, potentially leading to their run-up. Lastly, we reach Phase 4, where the largest and riskiest meme stock short positions will be closed, resulting in a significant squeeze. However, we have yet to reach Phase 3 or 4. Ignatius tweeted a thought-provoking statement regarding companies being able to influence political parties through campaign contributions. This age-old practice is unlikely to change, and these political parties will pressure the SEC chairman to align with their campaign contributors' interests. FTX, Citadel, and Susquehanna are particularly significant in this regard. Citadel and Susquehanna are major donors to the SEC and other institutions, ensuring their influence over them. FTX, which donated $75 million in 2022, recently made headlines as the U.S. offers to temporarily drop some charges against Sam Bankman Fried, the disgraced crypto executive. Federal prosecutors in New York proposed dropping five of the 13 charges against Sam Bankman Fried with the option to try him later on those charges. This aligns with previous expectations that these charges would gradually disappear from the media, resulting in no charges against him. It is disheartening to witness the CEO of a major fraudulent enterprise facing minimal consequences due to donations to the SEC and the Fed. Lastly, Finance Lancelot's tweet indicates that money flowing out of the crypto market is pouring into meme stocks. As cryptocurrencies experience downward trends and controversies surrounding platforms like Binance and Coinbase come to light, retail investors heavily invested in crypto may withdraw their funds and seek potentially high returns elsewhere. Meme stocks present a viable option for these investors, and it is worth noting that many wealthy crypto millionaires emerged in the past decade who may find solace in joining the AMC and GameStop communities. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about AMC stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.